Hello folks, today we're going to take an in-depth look at the cloth tool in Motion 3. If you're new to the Motion 3 plugin for After Effects, check out my overview video where I go over every feature in this awesome tool. Today we're going to be focusing on the highly requested cloth feature. I'm going to show you how to make some hair, some drool, this nice little flag, and this crazy beanstalk. And like usual, links and discounts can be found in the description below. So, without further ado, let's get into it. So I got this bouncing person right now, but the problem is their hair is looking too stiff, like they got a lot of hair gel in here or something. So. Let's make this look a little more natural. So we're gonna add a cloth to this, right? So we gotta first start by putting some puppet pins in here. And we wanna start by putting in uh, first to last. So we'll start at the base here and just throw down some puppet pins like this. I think the more you put in, the more natural it looks. So we'll just do that. That might be too many, but who cares? And then I'm gonna click cloth now with this layer selected and we have a few options here so we have a keyframe composition and the shy guy i'm going to not click any now to demonstrate what happens if i don't so we'll do this all right it's going to generate a bunch of layers and boom here we go so let's see so right now nothing's happening okay it's not it's, we don't have any cloth action going on this yellow layer we have our control i'm going to open up some properties i'm going to open up the cloth now we can parent this to another layer so i'm going to click enable and i'm going to select our person to parent this to our person and it gets a little bit it, it uh, it's going to target the center of that layer so i'm just going to move it back into position and let's see what has happened. Now, sometimes what happens is this. Looks like there's a little bit of tearing here, you can see. And if you look at our the dots that generated from the layer, those are doing what they're supposed to, but it looks like it's not really like carrying the information from our layer. This happens sometimes. I haven't figured out quite what the correlation is. I think it has something to do with vector shapes. So that this I've imported from Illustrator, converted to a shape layer. And I think that's the issue that generates sometimes. You can see it's kind of working. There's some weird tearing that happens. So if you have this issue, it's not always consistent. What you want to do then is I'm going to undo all this, undo, undo, back to here. When you're going to generate your cloth layer, you want to click here and you want to use the composition button. So when you're at this stage, you have these options. This one is going to create a keyframe. I haven't figured out why this is useful, so I don't do it. You want This one is going to create everything into a composition. So I'm going to do that. And this one, when you click it, it's just going to shy everything once it's made to hide all the layers. That can be useful too, but I'm not going to do that either. So I'm going to call this hair, hair, and I'm going to create a cloth. Boom. Once it generates, so now everything is, all those layers are inside of a composition now that it's made. And so now when we do this, it should work without that tearing issue. So I'm going to re-parent this to my layer, enable, click on person, uh, re-bring this up, boom, 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 here we go, put it on the head of my person. And now when our bounce is happening, beautiful. We have some beautiful flowing locks of hair, kind of looks like my own. Very nice, that's why I like it so much. But there are some other settings we can run through real quick to see what they do. So we have this delay here, and it's set to 25%, which I think is usually a really good amount, but you can make it longer or even go negative, which would kind of change like the anticipation to be um, beforehand, which is obviously not gonna look natural in this case. We have this drag and scatter, which I'm not totally sure what they do, but it looks like they just kind of uh, manipulate the points um, around wherever these kind of anchor points are. 
if you open up the advanced settings, we have dynamics, which you can enable, which are basically just going to add a wiggle to your cloth and make it kind of go buck wild. This could be really good if you have some kind of magical hair that you want um, to just kind of uh, go crazy off the head. See, it is going to add a crazy wiggle to your hair like this. Obviously not going to be right for this one. I will take that off. And then we have these um, the properties of our cloth up here um, on, on the points. So if you wanted to actually um, keep these points where the puppet, where, if you wanted to keep these uh, puppet pin points enabled here, these controls, you could actually enable these, give them some color and some size variations and cycle through these and um, actually keep these in the render of your animation and incorporate them into your render. Um, so no, you know, this could be good if you're wanting to make some kind of chain or something like that. So just know that if you keep this enabled, this will show up in your render. So this is a basis of how you would make hair. So let's move on to the next example. Now what's really cool is you can do this to, you know, animated layers and compositions too. So on a recent animation I made, I did this with drool. So I had this animated shape layer, right? It's just this kind of triangle that animated down like this, a simple shape. And then I added a rounded rectangles or a round corners like this, rounded the corners out. So it made a drool shape. So I had this simple shape layer and then I added some puppet pins to it, starting from top to bottom. I just added three puppet pins here. And then I added my cloth like this, made sure it was in a composition. I'll call this drool. And then now when I, I have my animation retained in the composition, and let's just say I add a dynamics here so you can see the effect, I'll crank it up a lot. And now we have some drool flinging around like this, a nice little slobbery loogie, very cool. All right, so I have this nice little Canadian flag. This is historically accurate, don't look it up, just trust me. And I wanna give this some life, put some wind on it. So I'm gonna go ahead and make my puppet pins. I'll start with these down the spine or whatever it's called. One, two, three. Put some near the middle, one, two, three, like this. Great, and then some on the edge here, whatever, cool. Now that I have all these puppet pins set up, I will add my cloth to it. Now I'm not gonna put this in a composition this time because I want access to all the pins right outside here. So that's fine. I will just click it. And we are good to go. So now this is generated. What if I add a dynamics to this just to get some wind going? Well, that's a lot of wind, right? It's too much wind. Let's tone it down a little bit, like 50 and see what happens. Cool. So, you know, we almost have a nice flag going, right? But the problem is that these um, aren't sticking to the pole. So we can go to these specific points here, right? This point and open up this setting called magnetism. Enable magnetism like this, and then click mirrored. And now this one's gonna stick to the pole there. And just do that for each one of these. Enable magnetism, enable mirrored. Magnetism and mirrored. And now we have this nice little uh, flag stick into the flagpole. And we could just play with the dynamics, the global dynamics here, as much as we want with those stuck to the pole. And we're just gonna have this dynamic wind that's going through this and it's now it's no problem. Cool, nice flag. What if you wanna make a beanstalk? All right, let's go for it. So I got my beanstalk layer here. Let's call this beanstalk and all my leaves attached to it. So I'm gonna go ahead and make some puppet pins here along this beanstalk and I'm gonna put them near where my leaves are like this. Okay, click down it like this. I'll make an extra one at the bottom for good measure. Cool. Now I'll make my cloth. 
and I'll generate this. Again, I did not put it in a composition because I want access to these controls outside of it. Let's just make sure that it did not cause a problem. And it did not because I drew this shape in After Effects, so there's no tearing here. Okay, cool. And the good way to test that is just by clicking on Dynamics and seeing, make sure, making sure there's no problem. So I just want some easy back and forth motion here. My beanstalk, like it's just waving back and forth. So I'm gonna create a new null object. I'll just throw this right in the center here. On the position property, I'm gonna add a dynamics. I'm gonna open up the separation, enable it, and I'm just gonna zero out everything except for the X amount, and maybe I'll put that at like 50, and 50 for the amount. So now, this is what, basically the amount that that would be. I will open up my Beanstalk controller. Let me put this one at the top with that null. Open up the cloth parent controls, enable them, and target that null, which is my dynamics. And just re recalibrate things. Back to the top here. Line it back up with my leaves. And then let's see what's happening. So that's basically how much my um, beanstalk is wiggling. I don't like that amount. I'm just gonna fix it up a little bit. Maybe it wants to be one times per second and a little bit more exaggerated. So like 75. Okay, I think that's fine. That'll work for now. Cool. So now what I wanna do is let me actually unable this and get my things into position here. So I wanna parent each one of my leaves to the corresponding control. So this one is going to parent to control two here, this dot, this one to three, and so on. I'm just gonna go down the line here. That's to four. This is to five, this is to six. Now if I turn my dynamics back on, you'll see everything's moving in tandem. Look at that. Got a nice little beanstalk action going. One thing that I think is still left here is that if I was to really kind of crank this motion up, right, like this, the leaves aren't like, they're not rotating with the, the motion. They feel like they should be rotating corresponding with the way that this is moving. They're just all facing upwards. So let's go ahead and see what we can do to fix that. Well, the easiest thing would probably be to just add a dynamics to each one of these, just a random wiggle. So it looks like they're just blown in the wind. So why don't I just open up the rotation on each one of these by clicking R, or I can grab the rotation on one by clicking R, then highlight the rest, and then use the grab tool in here. Click grab, and then that will grab the rotation on all of them. And then I will just click on my dynamics, and that will add a dynamics to all of them. Now the initial dynamics is obviously way too crazy. This looks like they're doing the YMCA or something. But I'll just go in on one of these, on this one, and I'll find an amount that I like. Let's say, 0.75, so that's 0.75 seconds, an amount maybe 15 pixels. Let's see what that looks like. That's probably good. And I'll copy this effect here, and I'll just paste it on each one. Paste, paste, paste. And let's see what that looks like. You know, maybe if I cared a little bit more about this, I would make the amounts a little bit different on each one. Or you could go in here and change the seed to make it a little more random, something like that. But this is just an example, so I think this is fine. And there we go. I think that um, helps give it a little, uh, helps make it a look a lot more natural. So cool. We have a nice little beanstalk flown in the wind. Beautiful. So ladies and gentlemen, let me know if you liked this video, leave a comment. If you 
want me to go in depth on any other tools or plugins or anything else in the future. And thank you for watching. Goodbye.